what is good everybody welcome back to another episode brought to you by the league ffb today we're going to be concluding our ranking series for redraft fantasy football at least our early rankings so we are going to be talking about the quarterback position today if you have not watched the running backs, the wide receivers, and the tight ends, we've done those already. They are on the channel. They will also be linked in the description so you guys can catch those after this video. But like we've done with all of these other rankings, we will be looking at Fantasy Pro's expert consensus rankings. That's long for ECR, and we will be comparing my rankings in comparison to the ECR, talking about the differences and going about those differences in detail. So without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's video. Let's start looking at some of these quarterbacks, and let's start talking about some of these guys. So starting it off in the first tier of quarterbacks, I only have two quarterbacks in this tier. We are going to be talking about Josh Allen. He is my quarterback one, and we will talk about uh, Jalen Hurts. He is my quarterback two. So these are the top two guys in my tiers right now. Now, this really shouldn't be a surprise because if you look at last year's fantasy points per game, this was the quarterback one and the quarterback two from a fantasy points per game standpoint. You also look at the fact that both of these guys had 15 rushing touchdowns. Now, I know that there's a little bit of concerns with each of them. Josh Allen, he lost Stephon. Diggs no longer on the team. He is with the Houston Texans. And then Jason Kelsey retires from the Philadelphia Eagles. Maybe not going to be the touch push for Jalen Hurts. I just think that these issues are a little bit overblown. If anything, you could argue that because Josh Allen lost Stefan Diggs, he might run more. You could also argue that Jalen Hurts might throw for more if he's not getting the rushing touchdown. So all in all, there's really not too much to worry about these guys. These guys are elite fantasy football producers, and they are the only two guys in my top tier. Now, moving on to my tier two, I also only have two quarterbacks in this tier. So coming in as quarterback three in my rankings Lamar Jackson and my quarterback four in my rankings is going to be Patrick Mahomes and again we don't got to dive too much into detail about these guys these are both very elite fantasy football quarterbacks they have very high floors Patrick Mahomes he has the ability to throw for 40 plus touchdowns any given season he has gotten an upgrade in his offense this year with Hollywood Brown and Xavier Worthy and then you talk about Lamar Jackson the rushing upside is immaculate for a guy like Lamar people are going to be worried about Derrick Henry taking rushing touchdowns Lamar wasn't scoring a lot of rushing touchdowns in the first place he is a rushing yardage type of guy and he will still throw for a decent amount of yardage and throw for some touchdowns as well. So both of these guys, very high upside. I have Lamar over Patrick Mahomes just for the slight edge in the rushing upside, but both of these guys are in my tier two. Now my tier three here, this is where it gets a little bit interesting because I have five quarterbacks overall in this tier. We will start it off with my QB five. That is going to be Kyler Murray of the Arizona Cardinals. Now my QB six will be CJ Stroud. My QB7 is going to be Anthony Richardson. My QB8 will be Joe Burrow. And my QB9 will be Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, this group of guys kind of sums up my tier three. This is by far my favorite tier of quarterback to attack in drafts. You have a lot of guys with immense upside, and they don't have the draft cost of a guy like Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. You are not going to have to pay the type of cost that you are going to have to get to get one of those guys. But I think these guys all have the ability to give you high-end elite quarterback one numbers. Now, I think guys like CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson, they're okay at their current draft cost. They are going to be the most hyped to be because they are the younger guys going into year two. People like the rushing upside of Anthony Richardson. DJ Stroud, he has all the hype in the world. But if you wanted to invest in one of these guys, it is going to cost you a fourth or a fifth round pick in your drafts. That is a little bit more than some of the guys in this tier as well. So because of that, I'm probably not drafting them. If I was drafting within my tiers, I would draft some of the other guys that are going a little bit later. Speaking of some of the guys going a little bit later, I think Joe Burrow and Dak Prescott, they are both good options. They're kind of similar bets if you ask me. Dak Prescott, Joe Burrow, they have the elite wide receiver ones in Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb. Both of these guys have downgraded rushing offenses with Joe Mixon leaving and Tony Pollard leaving. And so because of that, both of these guys could throw for a ton of yards here this year with an increase in passing volume. But by far, my favorite pick in this tier has to be Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray, like you see, I have him as my QB5, and he is currently being drafted in the late sixth round, so you can get him the latest of all of these guys as well. So as I mentioned, Kyler Murray, he's my quarterback five. You look at his underdog ADP, he's being drafted as the QB7, so a slight little value over there on underdog. And you look at the 2023 fantasy points per game, he averaged 18.9 fantasy points per game last year. Now, Kyler Murray, he's been one of the most talked about quarterbacks on this channel over the entirety of the offseason, mainly due to the fact that I've called him a massive value in both redraft leagues and in dynasty fantasy football leagues this year. But when you look at the last couple of seasons for Kyler Murray, you kind of notice that a lot of the people that are down or out on Kyler Murray are really only out on him due to the availability concerns that he has had. Now, this is kind of valid because Kyler Murray has missed 44% of his games over the last two seasons due to an an injury, but that was just one injury, an ACL tear that caused him to miss time in both of those two seasons. So with that behind him, I think we need to start looking at the 
upside that Kyler Murray possesses. When you look at what Kyler Murray has done as a fantasy football quarterback over the entirety of his career, you notice that he averages 19.9 fantasy points per game, which does put him in the same conversation as guys like Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Andrew Luck. And if you watch the Blind Resume episode, you'll also know that Kyler Murray was a top 12 quarterback every single year of his career in fantasy points per game, and he also has two top five quarterback finishes in fantasy points per game, both coming in 2020 and in 2021 before the ACL injury. Now going into 2024, you bake into the fact that Kyler Murray, he gets this wide receiver upgrade from Hollywood Brown to a generational talent in Marvin Harrison Jr., which arguably is going to give him the best wide receiver he has ever had since DeAndre Hopkins played for this football team. And those were the years that Kyler Murray was posting top five numbers. And you can see why Kyler Murray possesses that dual threat ability for the rushing and the passing yardage that we need to give us another top five finish here in 2024. I just think it goes without saying, when you look at the actual production that Kyler Murray puts on the field, there really is very few quarterbacks that have the type of passing upside and rushing upside that Kyler Murray possesses. And you look at all of the upgrades that he's gotten on the Arizona Cardinals this year, Year. He is by far one of my favorite picks to make at the quarterback position this year. And again, people are starting to rise on Kyler Murray. They're a little bit late to the party, but I don't think that we've risen far enough. He is a top five quarterback for me in my rankings. But now that we've talked about the tier three, let's go on to tier four. This is a massive tier of players, and there's a lot of guys in here. I think eight guys total. So let's talk a little bit about them. Right now, as my QB 10, I have Jordan Love. As my QB 11, I have Brock Purdy. My QB 12 is going to be Jaden Daniels. My QB 13 will be Jared Goff. QB 14 is going to be Tua Tungavailoa. QB 15 is going to be Caleb Williams. QB 16 will be Trevor Lawrence and QB 17 will be Justin Herbert of the Los Angeles Chargers. So like I said, a very big, very massive tier of players here in this tier four. Now, obviously there's going to be guys that I prefer over some other guys in this tier. Obviously why there are rankings within the tiers as well, but you'll see this tier has a lot of guys that can give you those low end QB one numbers, maybe that high end QB two type of numbers on any given week. And some of those guys being the Jordan Loves, the Brock Purdy's, the Jared Goff's, the Tua's, the Trevor Lawrence's, all of these guys combined, they kind of give you that low end QB one, high end QB two type of feel. You also have the two rookies in this tier with Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams. Obviously, these guys are very hyped. They can break out here in 2024, and they have the ability to do so just based on the talent and the situations around them. And then you have a guy like Justin Herbert, who the talent is much higher than where he is being valued at right now, but the situation is so bad. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, a lot of turnover and a lot of change over there in Los Angeles, and now a run-heavy offense. I think Justin Herbert's 2024 looks a little bit grim, but with that being said, he still deserves to be in this tier because he has the talent to still give us those low end QB1 numbers or those high end QB2 numbers, however you feel with Justin Herbert. Now, there's really nobody in this tier that I am higher on than consensus, but there is somebody that I want to highlight and I want to talk about a little bit, and that is going to be Jaden Daniels of the Washington Commanders because I think some people will be surprised as to where I have him currently in my rankings. You see, right now, he is my QB12. You look over on Underdog Fantasy, he's being drafted as the QB11 over there. And then obviously, the fantasy points per game, we have none. He's a rookie. There is nothing to look at at the NFL level. So with that being said, Jaden Daniels, he will be one of the riskier picks that I think we can be asked to make going into the fantasy football season this year. But when you look at the profile of Jaden Daniels, you'll notice that this is one of those types of players that can break out and completely dominate, shatter fantasy football with his rushing upside. You look back at the 2023 season with LSU, Jaden Daniels, he won the Heisman Trophy after totaling nearly 5,000 yards and scoring 50 touchdowns. But what I care about the most, especially when it comes to fantasy football as a rookie, is the fact that he rushed for 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns on the ground last season. Now, of all of the quarterbacks in this tier, nobody really possesses the type of rushing ability that Jaden Daniels does as a rookie for the Commanders. And quite frankly, there's only a few quarterbacks that possess this type of rushing ability in the entire NFL probably Lamar Jackson, Anthony Richardson, Kyler Murray, Justin Fields, probably end the list. He is one of those types of game breakers from a rushing standpoint. And you also look at the fact that Jaden Daniels, he's going to be working with Cliff Kingsbury in Washington this year, who can be attributed to partially developing Kyler Murray at the NFL level and kind of building an offense that allowed fantasy football players to see the best out of Kyler Murray as well for their fantasy football lineup. And that alone gives me a little bit of faith in his development with Jaden Daniels, at least for a rookie quarterback in fantasy football. Now, the weapons they may not be as good as some of the others, but he still has some decent options in Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Luke McCaffrey. But like I said, nobody in this tier has the rushing ability that Jaden Daniels has. So because the rushing ability alone, plus the fact that he may just be a good thrower at the NFL level as well, this is a player that many people are going to have to make that high risk, high reward type of bet on. But if this bet does hit for fantasy football, he is going to absolutely smash and be a massive fantasy football contributor. And now moving on to my tier five here, we have seven quarterbacks in this tier as well. So come 
Coming in as QB 18, that's Matthew Stafford. QB 19 will be Deshaun Watson. 20 will be Kirk Cousins. 21 is going to be Geno Smith. 22 is going to be quarterback Aaron Rodgers. 23 will be Baker Mayfield. And 24 will be Russell Wilson of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Tier 5 here is a little bit of a group of older guys. Not all of these guys really have the upside that the guys above them had. I feel like most of these guys are just solidified QB 2s. Maybe can give you a few QB 1 spike weeks just based on the offenses that they're in or something like that. But it is worth noting that we still have some damn good quarterbacks in this range and a lot of guys that I would feel very comfortable with as my QB2 as a streaming option in 2024 if I did decide to kind of play chicken at the quarterback position during my draft. Now there's guys here like Stafford, Cousins, Rodgers, and Mayfield. They all have a ton of fantasy football options that they can throw to, but really all of these guys, they have zero type of rushing ability. So there is zero rushing upside with them in those four point passing touchdown leagues. Now because of that, they're probably going to have a little bit of a lower floor on any given week. So that is why they find themselves in this tier here and although nobody in this range is really a bad pick I still think all of these guys are solid quarterbacks and in fact Matthew Stafford he's one of my favorite picks in this range I'm just not that much higher on him than consensus but there are a couple guys that I'm a little bit higher on than consensus I guess according to ECR those guys are going to be guys like Deshaun Watson Geno Smith and Russell Wilson so starting it off with Deshaun Watson I currently have him ranked as my QB 19 you look over on underdog fantasy he is being drafted as the QB 21 over there and his fantasy points per game in 2023 was 15.2 fantasy points per game. Now, Deshaun Watson, he's had a rough couple of seasons ever since he joined the Cleveland Browns, and a lot of it has been due to the suspension that he had, and then there were a few injuries that have resulted in him only playing in 12 games over the last two years. However, the Cleveland Browns, they went out this offseason, and they traded for Jerry Judy, formerly of the Denver Broncos, and they're adding another receiving threat to this offense because it seems like they've been looking for a guy to compliment Amari Cooper for a couple of years now. They've tried to add guys in the NFL draft like Cedric Tillman, and they've tried to trade for guys like Elijah Moore, but the addition of Jerry Judy should be an immediate upgrade to those guys currently in this offense. Now, the big thing here is the Browns, they're going to be changing their offensive philosophy here in 2024. They've decided to move forward with former Bills offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey as the new offensive coordinator here in Cleveland, which is going to get them away from that old establish the run play style that they've had over the last couple of seasons with Alex Van Pelt as the play caller. So not only will they naturally become more pass heavy under Ken Dorsey, but there could also be some negative impact impacts on this run game as Nick Chubb continues to try and rehab from that really gruesome knee injury that he suffered last year, which could lead to more passing opportunities for a guy like Deshaun Watson earlier in the season. So now looking at another guy that I'm a little bit higher on, let's talk about Geno Smith of the Seattle Seahawks. I currently have him in my rankings as my QB 21. You look at where he's being drafted over on Underdog Fantasy, currently being drafted as the QB 23. And then the fantasy points per game last year during 2023, he averaged 15.8. Now last year was a little bit of a down year for Geno Smith when you compare it to the 2022 breakout season that he had where he finished as the eighth overall quarterback in fantasy points per game. But looking ahead to 2024, the Seattle Seahawks, they have moved on from old head coach Pete Carroll and they've moved into a new era here in Seattle where this offense is going to be called and ran by Ryan Grubb, who has called one of the best passing offenses in college football over the last couple of seasons with the Washington Huskies. Now, because of this, I fully expect a new look Seahawks here in Seattle this year, especially on the offensive side of the football. And when you account for the fact that he's still throwing the football to guys like DK Metcalf, Calf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and Noah Fant, who we talked about in the tight end episode, and you account for the new type of play calling, I think this whole offense can take a step forward in 2024. Now, even though he may never get back to that top 10 type of upside that he had for us in 2022, I think drafting him where he's being drafted right now gives you a lot of room for him to become a value pick for us in our fantasy football drafts, because I still think Geno Smith in this offense with Ryan Grubb can give us those quarterback two numbers that we want, especially when we're making these picks later in our drafts. And I think if this offense looks anything like what the Washington Huskies offense has looked like over the last couple of years, Geno Smith could even give us that high-end type of QB2 numbers where he's finishing as a top 15 quarterback. And now the last quarterback that I want to talk about is going to be Russell Wilson, now the quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think this is a guy who could be a sleeper in fantasy football drafts, more specifically those super flex leagues. But you look at where I currently have him ranked, quarterback 24. You look at his underdog ADP, he's being drafted as a QB31. But you look at last year's fantasy points per game, he averaged 17.7 fantasy points per game. So more than a lot of the guys we've talked about ahead of him. Now, people, they continue to hate on Russell Wilson, probably due to the personality or the social media stuff that you see online. But as I mentioned, Russell Wilson, he was the quarterback 12 from a fantasy points per game standpoint last year when he was playing for the Denver Broncos. Now, I understand that he was benched. I do believe that he was wrongfully benched during that period. But you look at where he's moved over to now and he's playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers where he's going to be throwing the football to guys like Pat Frymuth, George Pickens, Roman Wilson, Van Jefferson, and a couple other options. And this definitely isn't the greatest offense ever that is certainly room for improvement, especially at that wide receiver 
Baker two role. But playing on this team here with Mike Tomlin as the head coach and Arthur Smith as the offensive coordinator, I think this is a team that will establish the run, but that should create some very efficient passing games for a guy like Russell Wilson. Now, like I said, he's being completely forgotten. He's being left for dead in your fantasy football drafts, but I think he can still give us QB2 numbers. And you see, I have him as my quarterback 24, but I would not be surprised if at the end of the year, he even finished higher than where I currently have him ranked. Now, a lot of people are going to be nervous about Justin Fields. And if Justin Fields steps onto the field and takes time away from Russell Wilson this year, but I think the only way that would happen is if the Pittsburgh Steelers were going to miss the playoffs. And looking back on Mike Tomlin's career, that's just something that doesn't naturally happen for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They pretty much are a competitive team each and every single season. And now you account for the fact that Mike Tomlin, he's got an upgrade at the quarterback position from what he's had in years past. And so I at least expect the Pittsburgh Steelers to be competitive in their division this year and at least be competitive for a wild card seed here during the 2024 season. So if I had to make a bet today, my bet would be that Russell Wilson starts the majority, if not the entirety, of the 2024 season. And if he does, he's going to be a massive value in fantasy football drafts. So there you guys have it. My top 24 quarterbacks for redraft fantasy football. Use them for one quarterback leagues. Use them for super flex, whatever you want. Just keep in mind it's four point passing. And with that being said, if you guys want to go check out some of the other positions, like I mentioned, we've now done the quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. So you can check out any position that you want to see my top 24 rankings at each of those positions. And if you enjoyed the video today, go ahead and hit that like button. It is the best free way to show this channel some support. Also, make sure that you guys are subscribed to this channel that way you catch all of our new content when it comes out and hit that notification bell that way you get a notification when those new videos drop and last but not least make sure you go join our discord i do have a free discord linked in the description i'm in there helping you guys with your fantasy football drafts dynasty trades anything you need best ball whatever fantasy football related i got you it's the best way to get in contact with me and like i mentioned it's free to join so there is no risk in doing that and with all of that out of the way i will see you guys on our next video but until then peace out